Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So I don't need toilet paper for a while. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I start this video, let me go ahead and say uh, that I'm sorry ahead of time if the video quality is not that great. I'm using my old phone because my new one broke into a million pieces when I dropped it. So I have to get it replaced. Uh, however, ladies and gentlemen, this video is not about me bragging about what I have and how much I have. I just want to encourage you all that slow and steady wins the race. And what you see here is a whole bunch of paper towels, a whole bunch of toilet paper, a whole bunch up there. If you can see, those are female sanitary napkins. And I just want to tell you that I've been accumulating this stuff here for about the last year and a half, almost two years. If you can see over there, these napkins over here, or these paper towels, those are the old Sam's Club paper towels for one, from when Sam's Club used to be here in Fairbanks. And when they closed, they were selling everything at 50 to 75% off. So I got all of those paper towels there for 75% off, including some of the toilet paper that Sam's Club sells, which is that palm toilet paper. I got that for 75% off when they were leaving. Okay, so slow and steady wins the race. You don't have to go out and purchase a whole bunch of stuff in one shot if you cannot afford it. Just continue to accumulate those things that you know that you will use and that will not expire with time. For example, I've had this tissue here, toilet paper and paper towels here for a couple of years now and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. I don't have a humidity issue inside of this trailer because our temperatures here are usually pretty cool. I don't have a rodent problem inside this trailer, right? Because this trailer, although I hit this trailer with a tree, let me see if I can show you guys. Up here, you see that? <laughs> I dropped a tree on this trailer, it's still sealed so no insects or vermin get in here. Okay, so slow and steady wins the race. I wanted to show you that I have probably about two and a half year supply of toilet paper here. Paper towels, we maybe go through one roll a month of paper towels because we mainly use like regular cloth towels to wipe the kitchen counters and stuff like that and then we wash them. And as you can see up there, you see those female sanitary wipes? They go back a whole bunch. I figure I have about enough female sanitary wipes for about 36 menstrual cycles. So that's roughly three years, right? This box down here is completely full. It's got about 200, 250 uh, maxi pads in it, all right? And as you can see, this is also a box of Scott tissue that I got from Amazon back when they were like $39 or $42, something like that, which now they're still not a terrible price. That box brings 80 and it's like at $57 right now, which is not a total price, but $39, $42 is a lot better than $57. So this is just one example of how slow and steady wins the race. Now, stay towards the end of this video because I'm going to be doing a short clip of Inside My Pantry. I went ahead and retooled, <laughs> I guess you can say retooled my pantry or part of my pantry so that it will accept more food than what it did before, right? Another thing I wanted to show you, ladies and gentlemen, I only have one box of baby wipes out here. However, I have several inside my pantry in the house. At first, I wasn't sure if baby wipes would be okay, freezing and thawing, and they're just fine. I had two boxes of baby wipes that I took out of this trailer early this year after the snow melted and after the temperatures came down or, or went up. All right, to where it wasn't freezing anymore. And those two boxes of baby wipes that I took out of here have been in here for about three years. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. We're using them right now inside the house. So we rotate through those. What I think I'm going to be doing is just taking some of the baby wipes I have inside my pantry, bringing them out here. That way I can make more room for food inside my pantry. All right, let me show you another thing that I've been slowly and steadily purchasing throughout this entire year and it's something that you've seen on several of my payday preps now look at this ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry that the uh, lighting in here is not very good but i'm inside my tent right now and as you can see i'm on that platform for the ap studio that i'll be building next year these are all canning jars now if you've been following my payday preps throughout this year you'll know that i've been accumulating these little by little throughout the year i didn't go out yesterday 
and purchased 25 cases of canning jars. I actually have a couple more cases inside the house. But this is what I've accumulated this year just by buying them slowly but steadily. Consistency is the key to prepping for the long term, ladies and gentlemen. All right. There were times where I only bought two cases. There were times where I bought six cases because they were available and because I had the funds and that certain time to purchase them. So as long as you're consistent in your payday preps and you continue to accumulate little by little, eventually it will build up. Now, who would have known 10 months ago, you know, the beginning of this year, that these things were going to be sold out everywhere and not available for the next six months during a time of the year when people are really wanting to use these jars because they're harvesting their gardens and things like that. Well, I purchased them knowing that I wanted to use a lot of these jars during this winter to pressure can more meats. So that's why I've been stocking them up all year long. And now, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? I don't have to worry if the stores don't have them. I don't have to worry if the company that makes them is not making them or not putting them out for retail sale for another six months because I've got plenty of jars now that I can do what I need to do with without having to worry whether they're available at the stores or not. This, I want to say, not patting myself on the back, but this is a great example of why we prep things that we know we're going to use in the future instead of waiting to the last minute to get them. Now let's go take a sneak peek at my pantry's retool to show you guys what I came up with. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the inside of my pantry. It's very small, so I can only show you one section at a time because there's really not enough room for me to move back and show you everything across, All right, like that. But let me just go ahead and show you what I've been doing to make more room in my pantry and what it looks like. So for those of you that have seen my pantry videos from the past, you'll notice that now, instead of just having one shelf with jars stacked on top of each other, I added shelves in the middle. So I reclaimed some wood that was just scraps, and I made those shelves, and now I can stack stuff on top that previously I would have had to have stacked on top of my jars, and now my jars are free from being uh, stacked upon and as you can see up here I've got some back there I've got some jarred or pressure canned pork which I'm going to be doing a prepper pantry cooking video with some of that pork here pretty soon I got some of our favorite chilies I got some Vienna sausages which I like and everyone in my house likes except for Mrs. Alaska Prepper <laughs> and uh, here I've got some pressure canned sausages, some pressure canned bacon, and let me show you what the pressure canned bacon looks like. For those of you that have never seen pressure canned bacon, and that looks really nice. All that white stuff is just the lard. All right, let me see what else we got here. Here's some pressure canned uh, pork, all right, and this one I actually pressure canned not too long ago, July of this year. We have some sausages that I bought here on a payday prep not too long ago. And we have a whole bunch of corned beef that goes all the way back. On this shelf here, it's full of nothing but chicken. So this goes all the way back. Nothing but chicken. All the way back. Then on this shelf, we have uh, jars that I canned of chicken. Quart jars of chicken that I canned in 2016. This is chicken as well. And... I've got some bacon right here that I pressure can in 2016 as well. Now, as you can see in between these spots, I've got napkins just to take up some space. And then the bottom is also full of chicken. Now, these napkins that I put here is just to take up space so that I don't have to find more room for them. But as you can see, I built a shelf for this one as well that's recessed in a little bit. And it's all full of spam. Nothing but spam. Yeah, so that's got spam all 
the way back. Our next shelf here is our oldest meat. So we'll be eating these meats first. You can see these were canned in 2015. You can see some of them are even a little dusty. That's some sausage that we tried. Now this sausage right here is not like your Italian sausage or anything like that. It's kind of like a bratwurst type. So, and they're pretty good. Even dog likes them. Well, dog likes everything. <laughs> but as you can see there, I've got some pork that I can in 15. This right here is just some chicken. Some things that I don't have labeled is because I can tell exactly what it is by looking at it. All right, we have some turkey back there. We have some bacon bits. Those of you that want to see bacon bits. All right. And this is just a little bit of overflow that I couldn't fit in the shelves that I built. So I just put it right there. Same thing with this. I have a little bit of overflow on beef right here. But as you can see back there, we have more beef. Actually, this is my experimental row. This right here is all experimental stuff. This here is a jar of meatloaf that I pressure can in 2014. And it still looks great. And pressure can meatloaf, ladies and gentlemen, is delicious. I'm going to wait till 2024 to open this up. Here's some sausage that I pressure can in 2015. And I'm going to wait till 2025. There's some other sausage here that I'll probably wait another two or three years to see how it is before we go for the 10 year mark. And this here is just some beef, ground beef that I pressure can in 2018. And it looks really nice. All right. In addition to that, we have some turkey that I pressure can in 2015 and it looks great. And then we have some, some chicken thighs and we have some pork that I pressure can in 2015 as well. These are just overflow. We're going to go ahead and use these whenever we want to use them. But that's what that looks like. And as you can see, I've got more spam. <laughs> There's another shelf of spam. You can see that I put some paper towels back there just to fill in some gaps. But this is the great value luncheon meat as well. And this is all spam and luncheon meat in this shelf. This shelf right here has more meats. My goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to try to fill as much meat in these shelves as I possibly can. So here we have chicken, ground beef. Back there, we have some of the Kirkland uh, roast beef in a can. And that goes pretty much all the way back. This is ground beef here. And that ground beef goes all the way back. I think they're what? One, two, three, four, five, six deep. So these quart jars are six deep. We've got chicken. This is uh, roast beef. This is turkey. This is turkey stock. And this is more chicken, I believe. Or no, more turkey. So we have chicken beef turkey and ground beef as well along with turkey stock and these are all my keystone that i've been purchasing throughout the years and those of you that have been with me since the beginning you all remember all of those videos that i did saying i bought more keystone at amazon because they were on sale for a great price so i didn't pay over five dollars and 68 cents for any one of these cans anytime i ever bought one of these cans is because they were like five dollars and change and now I don't even want to know what the price is now. Over here on this shelf, I've got a lot of my ghee. So this is the ghee that we're using right now. I pressure canned this ghee in 2013. It says butter there, but this is ghee. I've got some DAC hams back there. I have some more ghee right here that's uh, not as old as these, these guys right here. And I have... A flat of beef, beef roast, that I pressure can in 2019. And as you can see back there, I have, uh, you probably can't see it, but I have all of my red feather butter back there. And I also have some of the uh, cheese in a can back there as well, along with some fresh ghee that I pressure can not too long ago, or that I processed not too long ago. This one right here, <coughs> excuse me. I got all my beans, my black eyed peas. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are going to ask why I leave my rings on my jars, it's just a convenience thing. If you come to my pantry, <laughs> uh, you would notice that all of the rings are loose. Any jar that has a ring on it is loose. Like look at this one. 
Let's find another one with a ring. See this? They're all loose. I just do that so that I don't have to have an additional box or somewhere else where I keep the rings. All right. So over here, well, let me show you this top shelf. Well, as you can see, I have some of my PPE up there. But this top shelf is full of nothing but either bacon or bacon bits. So there's nothing but bacon and bacon bits there. And you'll be able to see back there, I have all of my coconut oils that I've accumulated over the last year and a half or so from Costco's. I think I have four or five of those back there. Like I say, you can see that I have PPE over here. I got my knife right there. Some more PPE. But here I've got some canned, this is my night vision <laughs> goggles. Here I've got uh, some canned goods in the form of just manwich, some corned beef hash, my B&M bread that I really like, some of the Vega cheese in a can that is good for almost ever. If you guys have never tried this biscotti spread, it's delicious. And of course, I've got a whole bunch of peanut butter that goes all the way to the back. And right now we're working on 2018 peanut butter, which there's nothing wrong with it. Here's my thermometer that I keep. All right. And uh, as you can see, it shows that inside right here in this room is 61 degrees. Right. Outside is 49 right now, but in this room is 61 degrees. This is kind of like a condiment shelf. You can see I have my mustard, ketchup. I have some tartar sauce along with some mayo. And I do have some spaghetti sauce. I remember saying I wasn't going to buy spaghetti sauce again, but my wife wanted to try this. So we bought a, a six pack, I think it was. And then back there, you can probably see that that's uh, Himalayan salt. That's like long-term storage stuff. So I just put it back there because I know that I'm not going to be dipping into it anytime soon. Down here is all my jams that I've made. So these are the jams and jellies that I've made myself, that I can myself. This is just some papaya that, uh, that we like to use to make Dominican cake. And then you can also see that I have some store-bought jellies and jams that were at a good deal. And I purchased them during a payday prep. On this shelf right here, the one that's below my condiments, is where I have a lot of my nuts and my sweets. You can see I have raisins there. I have some of these sweets. These are the bonbons that I did that uh, video with not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago. I have some nuts in there. And ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, these are still good. And then I have some pie filling in here that there's absolutely nothing wrong with these guys and some peanuts. As long as these stay sealed, these nuts stay sealed, they stay good. So whenever I open this big can of peanuts, I go ahead and I put most of it in like a quart jar and I seal it with an oxygen absorber and then I and then I leave out whatever we're gonna eat like within the next week or two. All right. So up here I have more sweets. I have a ton of honey. That honey that I put in in mason jars. I also have agave back there. So there's a ton of honey back there. There's some local honey, there's some pasteurized honey and I also have um, raw honey in here as well. All right. As you can see, I got some honey from Germany here, and this uh, appeared in one of my payday preps as well. For anyone that wants to know what this is, this is just some raw sugar, all right? Just some raw sugar cane that got uh, hardened into a block, and this is really good as well. Uh, it's good to use this if you're making like a flan, all right? I know that Hispanics like their flan, and this is uh, one of the things that you would want to use if you're making a flan for your for the part of the sugar that turns really brown. Of course, we have our drink mixes. We have our evaporated milk. We have our condensed milk, and those go all the way back. And then we have our cake mixes and some cookies up there. All right, right below that, I was trying out this, this unit here where it lets the cans go all the way around so you can put the oldest date in the top and then take them from the bottom. I'm not sure how much I like it yet. If I end up liking it, I might get another one so I can do this entire shelf just with those units with the cans in it. But as you can see, most of this here is just some Chef Boy RD. As you can see, they didn't all fit in the in the unit that I bought. And then here we've got some canned peaches, pears, 
mixed fruit. Down here, we have a whole bunch of olives and pickles. I still have those boiled peanuts that Mr. Tom sent me. We have some soups and we have some chicken broth. And those go all the way back pretty much. And this shelf right here, down here, we have some tomato paste, diced tomatoes in a can. We have olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. There's some lard back there that I can myself. And we have some mashed potatoes right there, the ones that we used to get from Costco, but for some reason they don't carry them anymore. And those mashed potatoes are awesome. And then as you can see, I have more oil down there along with some vinegar down there. On this shelf right here, we've got our two year supply of coffee. And this is what I would recommend if you're gonna store coffee long term is to get them in the vacuum sealed bricks. This can here is next in line to be used up, but it's still uh, less than a year old from when I bought it. And as you can see, we have about 40 pounds of organic all purpose flour there. And we have a whole bunch <laughs> of uh, pancake mix from Costco. Behind that pancake mix from Costco, I probably have about four cases of powdered eggs that I purchased from Costco last year. And then I repackaged them for long term by vacuum sealing them and by adding some oxygen absorbers. And up here, this is kind of like my spice area. This is spices that I've got vacuum sealed for long term with oxygen absorbers and then other spices that we use as well. When we run out, we just come and get it. Uh, some vanilla extract that I got that I've had before I started uh, making my own. This one right here, this I think it's Bodell or Rodell. This is outstanding vanilla extract. It's probably the best I've ever had. And that just happened to be a gift from a friend. But as you can see, I've got spices that go all the way back. Up here, I've got cereals. I've got oatmeal. I've got crackers. I've got hamburger helpers. I've got stovetop. I've got chicken noodle soup, the dry kind that you have to add water to. So I've got a whole bunch of dry stuff here that is calorie dense and that will last a very long time on its own without even repackaging it. Uh, the only thing that's repackaged up here for long term is the Quaker oatmeal that I vacuum seal with an oxygen absorber and then just put back in the box. And then as you can see, up here, we have some cup of noodles, which I've found that the cup of noodles last a lot longer than the ramen noodles without getting rancid because the cup of noodles are actually sealed where no air can get in. And since the other noodles come in a bag, more than likely air can get in and out of them. And they do go rancid a little sooner than these guys. But these guys I've had really good luck with. Up here, ladies and gentlemen, I just got a tote that's full of hygiene items. I've got a tote right here that says Mountain House Meals. Those are the meals that come in the cold weather MREs, the ones that come in the white bag. And there's probably about 300 Mountain House Meals in that tote. Then of course right here we have uh, napkins along with K-cups of coffee. Not sure how good they'll be and for how long, but I know that we've tried some that's already been about two or three years old and it was still good. And then up there, I just have miscellaneous stuff. You can see that I have some vacuum sealed tea up there, some coffee filters. This top row over here is a lot of my oxen farms. As you can see, I got more mountain house meals over here. You know, let me correct myself. I have about 300 mountain house meals between this tote and this tote, not just in one tote, right? This tote over here has all of my battle boxes that I collected over the years. And as you can see here, I've got more Oxen Farms, Emergency Essentials. And then I also have some Mountain House over here. This is one of the first things that I ever prepped was the TVP meat, which I will not eat unless it's a very, very dire situation. But more likely what I'll do with that is, is mix it with rice and feed it to dog if we ever have to. I only have three cans of that stuff though, right? Up here, as you can see, I have a lot of baby wipes. I have a lot of garbage bags. 
And I also have the construction size garbage bags up there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that's pretty much it. I've got a little cabinet here where I keep some paper towels up there. And uh, I just have some peas for my pea shooters in that little cabinet. And it, it just happened that we didn't need that cabinet when we built the house. So I just put it there so that I can put some peas in there for my pea shooter. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's about it. Uh, the floor is really a mess because I've been organizing stuff in here. So I won't take you through that torture. But on the floor, I just have totes. And I also have MREs under these shelves. But this is what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to go ahead and let you know, for those of you that are beginning to prep or haven't been prepping for a long time, ladies and gentlemen, I've been building this pantry for literally almost a decade. I did not do this overnight. I don't want anyone that sees this to say, I can never do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a millionaire. And I've been buying little by little over time. And this is what has become of me being consistent. I, I've been doing payday preps before I even started doing a YouTube channel. I just didn't call it payday preps. I just, you know, I just bought them to have extra stuff. So I've been doing this for a very long time. So don't be discouraged that you may not have this. But also take into account that this room is not a very big room. I would say that this room is about the same size as a walk-in closet. Okay? So if you have a walk-in closet or a couple of closets in your house, this is what you can do with it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be about it. I'm going to call it good for today. I hope that you guys have a great day and that you guys have a great weekend ahead of you. We'll see you guys on Sunday, 12 noon, Alaska time. We'll hang out and have a little bit of fun. Having said that, Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place. And you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.